Hello, church. This is not Jeffrey. This is Dick Wellscott speaking. He asked me to give this re- midweek reflection on some of the things that I've been thinking about during these troubling times. Troubling times they are. We've got over 10 million people who have COVID-19. We've got over a half a million deaths. We have a number of people who are angry and frustrated with the system. That comes out in uh, demonstrations, comes out in some violence, and it's a troubling time. Things will not get back to normal soon. And during that time, as I reflect, one verse kept coming back to me. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What does it mean to have life in troubling times? Jesus spoke those words in troubling times. If you go back to uh, chapter 9 and even part of chapter 8 and chapter 10 and part of chapter 11 in John, it's kind of a midpoint through John, and he picks up the trouble that he was having with the Jewish leaders of the day. In those two or three chapters, the Jews pick up stones at least twice and attempt to kill him. Troubling times for Jesus. And yet in the midst of that, he tells the story of the Good Shepherd. In fact, in this instance, he tells it twice. He tells it at the beginning in chapter 10 of verse 1, and he goes through the story about what the Good Shepherd is and how the sheep hear his voice and they respond positively and those who are thieves and robbers don't. And then they don't get it, so he tells it again. And that's where the verse that I quoted comes from. In verse 7, So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and they're bandits. But the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. What does it mean to have life when it seems that a number of the structures around us are are crumbling? What does it mean to have life in the midst of COVID? What does it mean to have life in the midst of um, anger and frustration? And not only life, What does it mean to have abundant life? I'd like to tell you a story. The story comes out of the 1980s. In 1981, I left Hope Church and took a position with the regional synod of what at that time was the Great Lakes, the synod that we're a part of. I became the director of church planning and development, and we developed a program called Acts 2, acting confidently in the spirit, and adding churches through strategy. We set a goal of starting 30 new churches within a set period of time. One of those churches was in Mobile, Alabama. The church was a success for the first three, four, five years. It had a campus. It had a ministry. It had two buildings. It used those buildings for ministry within the Mobile community, giving out and and, uh, sorting through Christmas presents and food and a number of things to help the community. The church ran into trouble, big trouble, leadership trouble, community problems in terms of the congregation. We had a, a vision, and the vision began to crumble. A new church start was defined as an indigenous group of people who followed Christ and would be self-supporting within a set period of time. They reached that goal. Within a couple years of reaching that goal, it began to disintegrate. As it disintegrated, we had to figure out a way to help that congregation, and we were a thousand miles away. We had over 250 people from Michigan who came down during the five or six years of its existence to help run Bible school, to help build that congregation, 
to do a number of things that would be helpful for that congregation. As we did that, we formed a bond with that congregation. We formed a bond with that congregation. And in forming that bond with that congregation, a number of people formed relationships with one another. It came time that we had to close that congregation. I was down there, and I had the opportunity, privilege, or duty, whichever one you want to use it, whichever words you want to use, to preach the final sermon. The church was full. About as many as they could hold from a number of people who had been um, but changed or, or found a community for the final service. After the service was done, I stood at the door and shook hands with people. A number of them had tears in their eyes. And then afterwards, I walked out onto the campus and was standing with a group of people. And I noticed a person walking towards this group that I was a part of. He was a large person, about 6'4", and weighed about 250 and 260 pounds. And he walked up and he said, I hate to interrupt, but I want to talk to you. And he looked right in my eye. And he said to me, he pulled me aside, and he said, you see that little girl over there? I said, yeah. He said, that's my daughter. He said, and you see that little boy over there in the short pants who's playing with that paper, with that paper sword? And I said, yeah. He said, well, that's my son. And he turned around and he says, you see that lady standing over there on the steps of the education building, the one in the blue dress? I said, yeah. He said, well, that's my wife. He said, three years ago, I almost lost them. My God was the Bible. I'm sorry, my God was the bottle. He said, I was drunk half the time. Somehow she got connected to this church, the one that you're closing today, and she brought me here. And I'm a changed man. He said, my God is not the, bo- my God is not the bottle anymore. I found God here. I heard his voice, and he changed me. He said, I don't know these people from Michigan who started this church, but I want you to go back and thank them because they changed my life. I found life here, and it's because of them. As I thought about that in relationship to the trouble that we're in today, I thought he heard the voice of the shepherd. He not only heard, but he listened. And he found abundant life. And so as I reflect on where we are and where I am, the question I keep asking myself is, are you listening? Are you listening for the voice of the shepherd? And if you are, and if I am, and I hear, how do I respond? God bless you.